Hey ladies and gentlemen, fellow coders, let's get into the creation of entities in this video. If you haven't uh, watched all the previous videos before this one, please go back and do watch those so that you know what the heck is going on. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be diving into the, like I said, the entities and creating them, which uh, are the Java representations of the database tables. <clears throat> That's essentially what an entity entity is. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean um, in the project. So I'm gonna create a new uh, package, which you can just think of as a folder, just like a, a folder on your computer. Um, I'm gonna call it domain, although you can call it entities if you like. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the name is, as long as you understand what that means. But typically, uh, from what I've seen, is, is the entities are put in a package called domain. <clears throat> And then we can create the uh, class file. So just a plain old Java class file. Um, well, the first, so there's four entities. There was user, feature, comment, and vote. So those are the four database tables uh, that we had talked about in, in the previous video, or videos, I should say. And those are gonna be the four Java objects that we're gonna create that represent the database tables. So the Java representation of the database tables. <clears throat> Those are called entities. So let's create the users um, or user entity. So uh, great, we have a public class user, very standard code. We're gonna annotate it with the entity annotation. Okay, and if I hover over that with my mouse, you'll see that I can import um, a Java X persistence. Don't get confused and import the hibernate one that causes problems. Let's be generic and use Java persistence API here. GPA. Um, there's one gotcha with this particular class, and that is because the gotcha is in MySQL, there's already a table called user. So that will conflict, uh, or sometimes it conflicts with um, that table. So I'd recommend that you use another annotation um, and just uh, called table, and that allows you to actually change the name, the default name of the table. So by default, the name of the table is gonna be the name of the class. Since the class is called user, the table will be called user. But let's override that with a table annotation and call it users with an S. <clears throat> okay, so I'll hover over table, import it from, again, Java X persistence, not from Hibernate. Cool, so there we go. And then we can start creating the contents of the file. So the first is an ID, I'll make it a long, although you can use an integer if you like. Uh, integers get up to ridiculously large numbers. Um, a long is just an even more ridiculously large number. So um, that's, it, it's completely up to you. If you think that your application's gonna have hundreds of millions or billions of users, um, then uh, yeah, then you can, I, I, even hundreds of billions, the integer might work because I think it's two to the power of 32 is an integer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Java integer uh, size. So integer is 32 bits, which gets you to, how many zeros is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is 700 million, so two billion. There you go. So in integer takes you up to two billion. If you think that you're gonna have more than two billion users, then you should use a long, okay? Um, I usually just, go right to long just because I waste space. So the, really the, uh, the, the, the downside of using a long is that it's gonna use up more space in your database, right? So your database is gonna be larger, which is not necessarily that great, um, but in this modern age, um, it's kind of a trade-off that we can be okay with in terms of more stability in our uh, application. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Uh, what was in, it would have been helpful if I had in front of me, I'm looking in front of me, I don't have my, the outline of the tables, um, which is really unfortunate. Maybe I'll pause the video and bring up a screenshot of that so that we can both make use of it. So let me pause the video. Okay, so I went ahead and sneakily grabbed a screenshot uh, of the uh, video that I had been recording. So um, this is our outline. So the users table, we just said username, password, and then the actual first name or complete full name of the user. So let's bring in those things. Those are all gonna be string values, as well as the ID. So private string username, private string password, and private string name. Oh, name, like so. And then I'll do a control shift S and do getters and setters. Uh, it's a quick shortcut key for getting to the um, uh, source directory. So if I right click and I go to source, 
that's Alt Shift S, and then it brings up this menu. So Alt Shift S brings up the menu, and then I say Generate Getters and Setters, select all, and that just quickly generates the surprise, surprise, getters and setters for the user object. So there you go. Now what we don't have in here yet is the relationship information. Maybe I'll do that in the next video, but uh, first I just wanna get the base information into uh, each of these uh, entities. And by relationship information, I mean uh, the join table. So the vote and comment and all that stuff. Um, those are probably going to be doing in the next video just because they take up a bit more time and I want to spend a little bit of time in this video talking about the GitHub stuff. So I'll go ahead and just create the feature table and then in the next video we'll go ahead and create the vote and comment tables uh, because those will be a bit more involved. So let's do feature. Uh, feature table has an ID, title, description, and status. So let's go ahead and create that one. We'll go to the same package, domain, uh, new, class. This one will be called feature. So then don't forget your entity annotation. I always try to make a, um, a point to remember to put all of my class level annotations on first so I don't forget them because I usually forget the class level ones. Um, so yeah, don't forget them. Now entity, did I spell that wrong? No, that's interesting. It's saying it doesn't understand what that means. There we go, now I can import it. There's a little bug. Um, okay, so private long ID, private string, what else was there? Uh, title, description, status. Title private string description and private string status. So those are, again, same easy to do, easy to understand concept here. Do our getters and setters, boom. Cool. Now, uh, there's more that we need to do here in order to make this boot up correctly and actually create these tables. Um, we need to assign um, an identifier. And I'll show you what it, what it looks like when you don't assign an, uh, assign an, an identifier, um, you'll get an error. So I'll go ahead and say run as, uh, I'll right click on the project, say run as Spring Boot app, that will launch it. Um, oops, cannot load main class. Uh, is that because, doo -doo -doo, that is, no, because it's here, right? So I should be able to say run here, right? Run as Spring Boot app, could not find, or load main class, interesting. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why would it not be able to find the main class? So sometimes, uh, I don't know, sometimes you need to build, clean and build. Sometimes you need to do a Maven install. Um, so I'll do a clean build and I'll go Maven, or sorry, update project, um, force updates of snapshots. You know, sometimes these things get a little wonky and you need to just give it a bit of a kick in the butt. Um, to fix any strange errors like the one I'm getting here. Um, it's a strange error, so uh, usually I, I just chalk it up to, oh, I need to do a Maven build or something and then it will um, fix itself. So as you can see, updating the Maven project, it's taken a little while, right? That's, you know, I've been talking this whole time, waiting for it. So it seems like it was doing something there. So now let's cross our fingers and run it again, run as Spring Boot app. And there you go. So that was the problem. This is just, you know, in my own experience, you do this so many times and you run into these strange errors and you just have these, um, these, this checklist of items that you go through to try to test this stuff out, to try to fix the strange error. And that's just one of the, one of my, um, tricks in my bag of tricks is you do a, a clean, like you saw there, a, a first do a project clean and build, right? Clean and then clean all projects and then it automatically builds the project. And then you go Maven uh, update project and you make sure you force the update of snapshots and releases and then oftentimes that fix any fixes any strange errors. So as we're booting up, we do have one error, application failed to start. Uh, we have no data source URL. So this is because of the application properties file is blank. We don't have anything in the application properties file. Now let me bring up, a, I have a document usually where I can copy paste this stuff in my notepad. So let me just bring my notepad. I have, uh, where is it? I'll just do this off screen. Here you go, copy paste. Um, so this is basically a, a very you know generic uh, structure for my application properties file. We'll point this to the fresh votes database. That's what you do. You put it on the end of the localhost 3306, if you're using MySQL, that's usually where the MySQL, um, sorry, I just cracked my knuckles, MySQL uh, server is located. Um, and then with the uh, later versions of Spring Boot, now I've got Spring Boot 2 installed, I actually need to use the MySQL 57, uh, 5.7 dialect. 
Um, otherwise, it doesn't start up properly. That's just something I've noticed of late. Um, so yeah, let's try this again. Let's relaunch our app and see if it gets past that first error, which it should. And then it should hit the second error, which is there we go. No identifier specified for entity. And then it'll just go through your entities. So the identifier here is saying, hey, there's no, you have an ID, but you haven't told, I haven't told Java to tell uh, or to hook up to the actual primary key of this table. So JPA in this case, Java Persistence API, uh, APIs, it, it doesn't know which, which field is the ID, okay? I wish it could figure it out by the names because ID is a pretty obvious name, but there's more to it than just that. So we need to tell it which one the ID is. So you annotate, typically you can annotate either the um, uh, instance variable or the getter method. Um, I tend to just do it on the getter method, um, but you pick one and stick to it. That's the only important thing. You can't mix and match. So if you're gonna put them on the getters, then put them on all the getters. If you're gonna put them on the instance variable level, then put them on the instance variable level. In other words, instead of putting the ID here, you put it up here, okay? Um, but you can't mix and match. So I'm going to put it down here. And also it needs a generated value. And usually I actually just put it all on one line generated value. So those are the two annotations that we need. So I'll do control shift O to organize my imports to import these things in. And then again, with, with Spring Boot 2.0, the, uh, the default generated value, uh, value generation type is not one that I prefer. So I actually explicitly tell it what strategy to use. So the strategy I tell it to use is identity which is essentially just an auto increment to automatically increment the ID of the table so that I don't have to specify the ID of the table myself. I don't ever, never have to pass it in, never have to think about it. I just say, give, create a new row for me and then it generates an ID on my behalf using auto increment, which starts at one and goes all the way to infinity uh, as you create more and more um, rows in the database. Okay, so then we do the exact same thing for the user table. Okay, so for the ID, you put in those uh, that ID and the generated value. Let's restart our server and see if it actually starts up now. One thing that you may need to do, and it, it did start correctly. One thing you may need to do is actually create the database. You didn't see me do it, but I did in the in the back end um, before the video. I actually created a brand new fresh votes database. So you need to go into your database um, application, whatever you use, whether it's MySQL Workbench or Toad for MySQL or Command Line. You need to go in there and create a database called whatever the database name is that you want to create. For me, I called it Fresh Votes. For you, I would suggest Fresh Votes so that your code matches mine. Uh, but you'll need to create that database uh, via the Create Database and then the name of the database uh, syntax. Cool, so there you go, now we fired it up, it's all working. Uh, this video is already gone a bit too long, so in the next one, uh, I guess the next one is where I will dive into creating the join tables, um, and then I'll show you what process I go through to use Git to check in, or to use source tree uh, to do my Git stuff, because right now source tree um, is, well, I haven't shown it to you yet, so I'll show it to you uh, probably in the next video, hopefully if all goes well. So. Take care of yourself. Looking forward to seeing you then. Happy learning as always. Bye for now.